All right, my friends, you have been waiting for me to cover the premier processor that's going in the Audioholics theater room of our smart home. And that is the Storm Audio ISP 24 channel processor, which we're going to be covering in today's video. Hey folks, I'm Gene Delisello with Audioholics, and I want to give you a little overview about this processor that I'm using right now in the Audioholics theater room. I want to talk about some of the advanced features of it. I'm going to do a separate video review of it as well as a written review, but I want to show you guys, I'm so excited about what configuration options that this processor has that justifies its rather you know, expensive price tag of around 24 grand, I believe it is. It's 24 channel processor. So this is what it looks like in my middle Atlantic rack. I also have the matching 16 channel amplifier and I'm using the RBH sound eight channel amplifier to power my front speakers, which you see here. And I just want to give you a quick overview of this room. We just finished putting all the acoustic treatments in. These are Sonatus acoustic treatments by Anthony Grimani. I have a 150 inch um, screen innovation acoustically transparent screen with a matching center channel right behind the screen. You can't see it. It's at ear level. Everything is perfectly matched here. These speakers, as you guys know, are fully active design. They're tri-amplified. They're being powered by very similar amplification that Storm Audio offers, the same kind of Class D uh, Pascal modules, but a much higher power modules in this particular piece right here. And I'm going to be doing more videos on that very soon. So I wanted to just give you guys a little teaser here. This is me the other night. I was listening to Pink Floyd, Dark Side of the Moon in DTS 4.0. It was awesome. Just an incredible mix. And I had it up mixed with the Oro 3D up mixer. And I added an extra subwoofer over here, similar to the front speakers, just to balance out the bass to get even bass distribution in the room. This is an RBH SV1212PR, I believe is the model number. It has their brand new 2000 watt amplifier. And of course, I've got the Valencia seating here. I love these, the Tuscany chairs. And you see a bunch of cables here. It's just literally, I got everything hooked up and calibrated and working. But I want to get back to what is up with this processor? Why is it so expensive? Why is it different or how is it better than what you can get um, just using a you know the typical Yamaha Marantz processors that are very popular and very good products in their own right? I want to show you exactly why I'm excited about this product. So I'm going to take you into the configuration of it. We're actually going to do this real time. I'm going to share my screen with you here. And any second now. All right. So here is the basically the way to access the processor. You've got three different methods of doing this. You can do it over the internet if you're on the same network as it as its ethernet connection you have it they have an app on the phone you could do as well as an ipad but to really get into the configuration of this processor you need to go through a pc this is the best way to do it and as you can see here there's a bunch of different options here i'm going to focus solely on the speaker layout and base management of what i did here that makes me so excited about this product so you can see my channel configuration here. I'm running a 9.1.4.0. The nine is the bed layer. The one is the subwoofer. The four are the high channels. And the zero would be like the top layer for Oral 3D, which I don't really run. I'm actually running three subwoofers in this system. And part of the reason what really turned me on about this product was how you can route LFE to your main channels even when you have a dedicated subwoofer channel. Most processors and receivers, you cannot do that. In fact, there's no receiver I know of that'll allow you to run LFE to the main channels if you have a subwoofer channel. The only way to get LFE to the main channels is basically to shut off your subwoofer channel. Then you gotta do all the base management uh, locally with your other subs if you do that. So this is, you know, it's not a very typical configuration what I'm doing. It's only because I have this advanced active speaker system that I had to use an external DSP to do all the base management and, and the sub routing. Now, another cool thing about this product, there's only two products that I'm aware of on the market that offer digital outputs. The Storm Audio is one and the Trinov is the other. And they're both you know within the same price brackets depending on configurations. So you can see my front three channels are actually digital. 
So I'm actually running a digital connection from the outputs of those channels into the, my Mirani DSP, doing all the base management, the FIR room correction stuff for the speaker setup. And then that takes the signal and puts it into the amplifier. And then it powers the speaker's speaker level to do the triamplification. So very few products that will, will allow you to do digital outputs and analog. So I've got digital for the front speaker left and right, as well as the center channel, which is also done through Marani DSP. You can see here, these are all digital. The rest of the channels are analog. And if you want to see a better view, I believe I could see a view here. So it is really cool. So it shows you the speaker configuration that you decide upon. So in my situation, I'm running a seven, seven, really seven bed layers. I am running wides, but I'm doing them in ceiling speakers with angled baffles. I just didn't want to put another pair of speakers on the floor. I pre-wired for floor speakers, but to be honest with you, I'm actually really happy with how these wides are working when they're in the ceiling. And then I've got my, my, my front and rear tops for the Atmos layers, got my side channels and my backs as well. So it gives you the layout here of what you have selected. And of course the subwoofer. So now to really see what's going on here, this I've never seen such advanced base management in my life. I mean, I've been doing this stuff for 20 plus years, and this is like an Audioholics wet dream of all the different configurations you can do here. So you can see, uh, for example, have my, my front speakers are set for large and sub. So what that means is my speakers are getting the main full range bass, and then any channel that's set small, the bass gets routed to the main speakers as well as LFE. So I created a separate sub routing bass zone. So I've got left, right going here, left, right going here. And then I have on my subwoofer, I have a sub channel as well. And this copies the main bass as well. So I'm getting stereo bass from my main speakers, which I, which I really want. And then I'm also getting that bass copied to the dedicated subwoofer that's behind us. So it's smoothing out the bass, but it's also um, low pass at 80 Hertz. So you have the option here to set your different low pass filters and high pass filters, various slopes on it. And here's what's really cool about it. So my subwoofer has its own bass routing. And then my left, right have their own base routing. So what I did was in order to not overload any channels, I knocked down the, the, um, the base sum and going to each of them by three DB, because what happens in a lot of cases, if you try to run a receiver without a subwoofer channel and you want to get all the base going to your main speakers, including the LFE, um, it, it tends to overload. You'll, you'll notice if you do that, I've done that for years, um, in order to run large towers, like I've been doing with LFE, I had to basically do exactly that. And what was happening when I would watch movies, I, I would get too much LFE or too much bass summing and the bass would be overpowering. So now I have the ability here to kind of fine tune all that and including all the summing from all the different channels. I've never seen a product in my life do this before. And the cool thing is you could set up sub, you could set up subsonic uh, filters. So if your subs can't handle the ultra low bass, you can enter, you know, the slope of it that you want and the frequency that you want. I just, it's really blows my mind what you could do here and the PEQ filters. So I know this system has DRAC. I have not run DRAC yet. I will plan on doing that in a future video, but I went in and I basically, you could assign, it seems like infinite amounts of PEQ filters. I went in and I measured my response with REW and I found it's the various filters that I needed to add to flatten out the base in my room. So you could see I had a really knock down base at 20 Hertz and below two reasons why this system, the RBH system has massive base output that you don't get in most speaker systems. And number two, I have a lot of mass in my walls because I did mass loaded vinyl uh, on the partition wall. I insulated my walls. So there's a lot of mass on my wall. So that base is really staying contained in the room and I've got incredible base extension. I'm going to do a separate video on that to show you guys as well. So you can see, I've got, you know, all these various options here to uh, EQ my speakers. But yeah, it's just, it's really amazing to me. Um, just the flexibility here. There's so many different options. You, here's the cool thing. If you have, let's say you have a, your Atmos channels and you don't, for some reason, want to route the base 
from the Atmos channels to your subs. You could route, let's say, the top left Atmos channel and the top or the top rear Atmos channel. You could route that bass to the closest speaker that's capable of delivering the bass. So if you have, say, a wide, a, a pretty large uh, side channel speaker that has good bass capability, you could take the bass from the Atmos speakers and route it to the nearest speaker. That way, if you want to, if you do believe in preserving bass symmetry or bass imaging, um, really, which occurs about above 80 hertz. But if you really want to preserve that base, baseness, um, you could do that. I personally didn't do that. I really feel happy um, just routing all this, all the base to the main channels as well as the subwoofer. My center channel sets small. Um, I'll show you a video on that. I just I got the base routing just good, so I have a really good transition from the 80 hertz crossover going to the other subwoofers. And you can see here you have all your various adjustments for delay and level. And you, you, the reason why my front speakers look like they're that far away is because the Murani DSP, even though it's done in the digital domain because of all the FIR filter stuff I did, it adds delay. So you have to compensate for that. So I had to make it look like my speakers were further away so they delay them less relative to the other speakers. So you have all that ability here. You even have the ability to lower any income, incoming signal so you don't overload it. If you don't want it to go to zero dBFS, you can lower that here. And it's just, it's really cool. Um, I can't show you this actively now because we don't have any signals coming through. But what I did was how I figured out how I needed to route the base and not overload any channels. When I initially set up the system and I didn't knock down the base levels that were being summed, I put on the Dolby Atmos Amaze demo and I overloaded my main channels. Like it was just the, the subs were going way too hot, like really bad. I was clipping, believe it or not, I was clipping a 1500 watt amplifier. So I had to really scale things back correctly and the cool thing about it is this processor will will show you all the different signals that the decoder have coming in so it shows you all your different channel assignments here uh, this is basically what it's reading off the disk and then it shows you the outputs and in in my case when i had everything set for full scale with all that summing going and even the copying of the base it was just overloading the left front and the right front channels and these things were pegging red so I just played the worst demo possible, which is the Dolby Atmos Amaze. I don't know of any other demo that puts out, it, it's too much bass, but it actually is a good test to make sure you don't break your system. So I went in there and, and I just kind of scaled things back to what felt normal to me and what sounded good. And, and there was no you know damaging to the speakers or clipping or anything like that, but you don't need to go that crazy. So I'm in the expert bass settings you can also go into the standard base settings and then it looks, you know, it, it kind of looks like you would see in a normal AV processor. Um, there's different modes you can have. So if you have, if let's say you have a two channel mode and you want to just have a different configuration for your speakers, you could save a profile and have completely different base management settings, different level delays, uh, anything you want. So what I'm going to do is I've got this multi-channel setup, which is what I use right now for pretty much everything I do. In a future video, I'm actually going to run DRAC. And when I run DRAC, I'm going to copy over this entire configuration, which has all my levels, all my filters, all my delays. I'm going to run DRAC on top of it. And then I'm going to be able to flip between my calibration versus the DRAC calibration to see which one sounds better. So I think that's really incredible. When you get to this level of price on a processor, you should demand something that gives you this level of flexibility. When you're doing something that's as complicated as I am with the RBH system, it just makes a lot of sense. So I hope you guys enjoyed this little tutorial on the base management. I'm going to be releasing a full measurement report of this processor in the near future. I'm going to show you some measurements in the room, you know, the different calibration stuff that I've done. And I would love to give you guys a listening test. I mean, I'll send, a, <laughs> you know how I am about YouTube listening tests. I'll, I'll put the mic there and I'll let you guys just listen to you. Whatever you guys de gleam out of that is fine with me. But suffice it to say, this is the most sophisticated um, system I've ever put together. I'm really happy with how it turned out. You can see me here smiling. I just took that picture before I uh, came here to do this video. 
Um, the rack that we built is really awesome. We have a middle Atlantic rack here. I've got all Furman power conditioning. I've got Luxel network gear, and I'm going to do some more videos on that. So you're going to see a lot of future coverage about the Audiohawk smart house. We're just getting warmed up now. We just finished building out the theater room. It's fully functional. Now we got to do the trim work in there. The next phase will be doing the, um, the master bedroom system. I'm just waiting on the new Yamaha RX a six a avantage receiver that'll be launching soon i'm going to be doing that with eclipse heritage soundbar passive soundbar as well as all in ceiling speakers and jail audio subs you guys saw my family room system already i think i i covered this a little bit we got the paradigm premier 800 f series with jail audio 13 inch in wall subs and it's all being powered by a marantz sr8015 so we mean business you know, and I'm really happy to have the opportunity to have a product of the caliber like the Storm Audio is, because this is the first time I've had this kind of base management flexibility, and it's really allowing me to fine tune this RBH system, unlike any way I was able to do prior with the regular processes I've been using to this point. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please subscribe, please share it, please thumb it up. Give me some comments down below on what processor you're using or what you're considering. Don't forget about our Patreon channel at patreon.com slash audioholics. You get direct access to me if you want to ask questions, suggest video topics. We also really appreciate the support you give to this channel. And until next time, my friends, keep listening.